Hello and welcome to the Flurry Analytics Advanced Events Feature Video. My name is Brad Jones and I am the Director of Product for Flurry Analytics. The purpose of this video is to review the advanced features that are available once you have implemented custom events. These features are user paths, user conversion funnels, and advanced segmentation. Let's begin with user paths. User paths allow you to see the paths that users take through your app as described by the events they trigger. This view always starts with the session start event. In this example, there is a pretty balanced distribution of user actions after the initial start session event, with the featured event occurring 17% of the time and app view load 15.8% of the time. When there are more than five paths at a given level, we show the top four in the graphic and group the others into the last box. The full details of all paths are available in the detailed view below. Clicking on the featured event, we see that of the 17% of times that a start session was followed by a featured event, 12% of the time a navigation event occurs next. After that navigation event, 2.7% of sessions end at that point. Anywhere that you see a triangle, you can use this to reset the display to use that event as the root event. So, if I click on the triangle on App View Load, I see the path that users take after triggering App View Load. This provides the ability to go deep into what your users do after a certain action. Now let's move on to User Conversion Funnels. User Conversion Funnels give you insight into how well users follow a path that you wish them to complete such as taking a tutorial, registering for a login, or making an in-app purchase. In this example, the developer has created three funnels to analyze user behavior. Opening the App Likes funnel, the developer can see that only 9.1% of the users that look at the App Detail page actually do an App Like. The charts below show you the absolute numbers and conversion rate over time. Mousing over a step and clicking will show you the details of how this step was defined. Now let's look at creating a funnel. First, I fill in the basics, such as name and description, and then I include the events that will define this funnel. Let's make this funnel identify users that did app like within the first seven days of their lifecycle in the app. For the first step, I chose the standard event, first app launch. I refer to this as a standard event because the developer did not have to instrument this event. Flurry Analytics does it automatically. Now let's create the second step. I select the app like event and then set not more than seven days for the time since last step parameter. Now I save this funnel. The funnel will take a few hours to calculate. I realize that this may seem like a long time, but there's a reason for this. With Flurry Analytics, we calculate your funnels across your entire app history, not just on a go forward basis. This allows you to ask questions of your existing data, which is incredibly powerful. Let's move on to advanced segmentation. I covered the topic of basic segmentation in the basic integration video. Here we will take it a step further by using custom events. In this example, we are going to identify Spanish speaking users that have viewed apps that cost $1.99 or $2.99 but have not downloaded an app via our app. I start by clicking on Add Custom Event. I then search for my app view event in the drop down. After that, I enter the name of the parameter by which I want to filter, in this case app price, and then enter each of the parameter values I want to include, which are 199 and 299. Once this is done, I click add to segment. Next, I select the have not triggered this event option, find the download button event, and click add to segment. Now we are done with the events part. The only thing that remains is to include just Spanish speakers, which I can do by finding and selecting Spanish in the language list. And then I name the segment and click create this segment. As with funnels, this will take a few hours to populate with data. Again, the reason for this is that Flurry Analytics is calculating this against the full history of your app. No sampling, no limits to new data only. Applying a segment to metrics is very easy. As this new segment I just created is not yet available, I can show you how to do this using one we created earlier. 
Here we can see what the user retention is of just English speakers. Soon this developer will be able to see the same cut for Spanish speakers that view apps but don't download them. This concludes the review of the advanced event features covered in this video. I hope you have found it useful and now see how you can use the custom events you have instrumented in Flurry Analytics to drive powerful analyses of your users behavior through user paths and conversion funnels and to segment your audience in countless ways. More information about these features can be found at support.flurry.com. If you have questions about this or any other aspect of Flurry Analytics, please contact us at support.flurry.com. At Have a great day.